Good morning all, I hope you are well. Today I thought I would do a little impressions video of a tobacco which I've lauded for some time. It's one of those kind of under the radar tobaccos, but I'm not sure that it's so much under the radar, but um, it's certainly a very reasonable tobacco to buy, in America anyway, you can't buy it here in, in the UK. Um, and the tobacco of which I speak is Amphora, Virginia. So this is from February this year, so it's pretty fresh. Um, and this is the, um, I think this is made by McBaron, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I just like this cut. This is like a, to me, what a broken flake is. Because you can see that the strands of the flake that have just been pulled apart. You can see the layers. Um, it's it's like, yeah, you see, it's basically strands which have been pulled out from a flake. Um, when I rub out a flake, it's to that consistency, usually. That's how I like it. Um, it, it keeps the burn slow enough, yet there's also um, room in the bowl. There's enough uh, room in the bowl for air to circulate. Um, and it doesn't completely disintegrate um, the blend, if you like. So you've got tobaccos which are still in some kind of shape. And when you have a blend of tobaccos put together into a flake, you know, you want to taste them together. And in this kind of level of breaking them and rubbing them out, you still get that. I mean, if you get a fully a ready rubbed blend, you do as well because it's all together in the in the bowl. But um, when the pieces are actually together in the bowl, you know, still stuck together, it may. I don't know if it does, but perhaps it gives it a, a, a bit of a, a more a blended flavour. I haven't the foggiest idea if that's true. Is that's what's in my mind. Um, but whether it's true or not, I do not know. I've not done any experimentation um, or investigation in that respect. So just tease it a little bit. Today's pipe is this beautiful, um, it's a kind of a Dublin, well, it's not really a bulldog, I suppose. Um, this was um, a custom made pipe made for me by Tom Phillips who is a guy here in the UK who used to make pipes. No longer, sadly. Um, I have uh, three of his pipes, I think. This one is beautiful. It's a chunky, freehand, beautiful thick walls, plateau, lovely grain. One of my early um, commissions. Um, the other one is, is the little bulldog, which you guys will be familiar with. This is um, the Tom Phillips bulldog. Also with a brindle Cumberland stem. Really beautifully made. It's a real shame. Real shame that he doesn't make pipes anymore. Um, I've re-drilled both of these pipes. Simply because I just prefer them with a, a, a wider draft, a more open draft. And um, this was another Tom Phillips, which I had made, also a custom um, order, which I had made. Um, I think it was actually before, um, I've got them at the same time, actually. I don't recall. Um, but I actually sold this off a while ago and the owner sent it back to me. He gifted it to me, which was just pretty awesome. Unbelievable, really. Um, and I've re-drilled them all um, and they suit my preferences much better. What I would say to you is if you have a Tom Phillips pipe and you find the drawer a little bit tight, that's all you need to do. Um, I think he used to drill his at um, either two and a half or three mil. Um, you know, after a while of smoking um, a pipe, you know, there's going to be a little bit of build up. You know, however much you clean them, you, it's very hard to get rid of absolutely every bit of tar. 
Um, so if you start off with say two and a half mil or three mil, you know, it's slowly going to become narrower and narrower um, as the tar builds up. So they can become quite tight. So in any event, I, I re-drill these to four and a half um, and uh, it just makes a lot of difference. Well, for me, it makes a difference between smoking them and not smoking them, to be perfectly honest with you. So the blend itself is a mixture of Virginias from Brazil, from the US, and Zambia. Um, pretty much a straight Virginia, but being a McBaron, it will have got it will have some kind of casing, probably maybe a sugared water. Um, or a maple kind of flavoured water, or something like that. Let's get it lit. My particular pouches were pretty much smoke ready in terms of humidity. So, in terms of flavor, the first thing which hits you is this sort of deep sweetness. Um, it's, um, I wouldn't necessarily go and sort of identify the fruit like you can do sometimes with uh, with vapors, for instance. You can say that it's a plummy or a figgy kind of flavor. This one is brighter, obviously. It's, it's a straight Virginia. It's more zesty. But there is a depth to it as well. It's a very smooth sweetness. Some Virginias, um, straight Virginias, you know, if, if they're not great, they can be a bit cigarette-y. Um, this one is not that. There's a, a little bit of a spiciness there. There's a sweetness, there's a little bit of a tea, like a sweet tea kind of flavor. Retrohale brings spice, a little bit of heat through the nose. Very, very nice. What I would say is that if you're walking the dog or taking a walk in the park or whatever it might be <clears throat> and you're not really particularly focusing on this tobacco, it could be perceived as a very nondescript cigarette type of smoke. But if you're relaxing and just chilling, taking life easy and appreciating the flavors that this offers, you'll get it for, to be uh, a much You'd appreciate it much more for the various levels of flavor that it offers when i say levels of flavor i don't mean that it's complex what i mean is you'll appreciate the depth of the flavors the sweetness the the fruitiness um, the spiciness the zestiness all of that i think you need to sort of be more focused on it to enjoy it to the full um, i say the same thing about uh, full virginia flake Although they're different flavors, but I say the same thing, that the flavor profile is a little bit, um, it needs attention uh, in order to appreciate it fully. Otherwise, it just becomes lost as a general, generic Virginia flavor. And I'd say the same about this. Um, a tobacco that I wouldn't say, for instance, is Orlick Golden Sliced. Orlick Golden Sliced is also predomin predominantly a Virginia tobacco, um, but the, the, the flavor is, is pronounced enough that no matter what you're doing, you'd recognize it as all it golden sliced. This one, in order to get it, in order to get it, I think you need to just um, relax and focus on it a little bit more to appreciate it.
the type of cut of the tobacco, the thick strands that I was showing you before, what that does is it just helps to slow down the burn. It helps to not overheat the burn um, so that it just, again, lends itself to being enjoyed calmly and slowly in a relaxed environment. If you try to sort of get this thing really stoked up, it's going to overheat um, and you would enjoy it. That's one thing with Virginias, if you overheat them, then they will become cigarette -y and not enjoyable at all. I find that the retrohale adds a little bit of, um, it kind of promotes a little bit of saliva, um, which kind of melds with the tobacco and it just is very, very nice. So I don't know why this is under the radar, and it tends to be cheaper than a lot of other tobaccos, um, but um, I would highly recommend this. I've recommended this for a long time. Although it's made by McBaron, I wouldn't call it McBite. Um, it really seems quite smooth, bearing in mind, obviously, that I'm using a charcoal filter. But if you don't use a filter generally and you don't have a problem with tongue bite, then this one shouldn't give you any tongue bite either. Um, it seems fairly available in the States. Um, I think it's possibly available in some places in Europe, maybe in Germany. Um, it's available in Denmark. Can't get it here, so probably it's available in most of Europe except for the UK. Not sure why. But I don't think it's ever been available. I've never seen it here in the UK anyway. And I generally get it from the States, and I'll uh, usually get a friend to buy it and send it over. Um, I should really stock this a little bit deeper. It's one of those blends, I think, which is worth having. The good thing about this blend <clears throat> is you can make it as punchy as you want. You can draw deep and take a lot of smoke into your mouth and get a richer experience, or you can sip on it and get a milder experience. It's entirely up to you. What I don't advise is fast um, drawing. So whether you draw deep or you sip, just don't do it too quickly one after another. But all in all, it's a nice, enjoyable, smooth, easy, sweet blend, which you can get um, more punch from if you want, or you could just take it easy with. It's a, it's a really versatile blend to me, um, if you smoke it right. Um, so I highly recommend it and um, it's economic to boot, so it's a win-win for me. So just a quick, I'm pretty sure I've done videos on this blend before, but again, just a little revisit. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it for today. I'm not making pipes at the moment. My workshop is closed until next week. So I'm kind of, you know, enjoying the pipes that I'm smoking and the cigars that I'm smoking and doing a little short uh, revisits on them. Um, so I hope that's uh, enjoyable. I'll catch you on the next one.